Welcome to Eat Your Heart Valentine's. I personally have not played this game. So, yeah, I don't know nothing about it anyways. Make sure you like, subscribe, join the family, you guys, and suggest some games to me to play. I really am out of the game loop. I didn't know they were making new games like, like that. Can't snap my fingers. Anyways, let's start the game. Valentine's Day. It's a day that many will think of with a sour taste in their mouth, while others excitingly prepare to woo the ones they love. It's a day all about love, truly romantic love. For many, it can mean loving a friend or loving a family member. Always decked out in pink, red, pink, reds, whites. The day is just a brimming with warmth. It's the perfect day to confess your love to somebody that you love, don't you think? That's exactly what we're here for anyways, right? Exactly. So why is it that I sit on a bench at, what, wait? I mean, where's the bench at? Where's the pictures? <laughs> I hope it's not a non-picture game, because if it is, I'm terribly sorry. Sit on a bench at you, can't push yourself to decide who exactly is it you love and want to confess to. Oh God, is that me? She looks so weird. Will you confess your feelings for the colorful pink hair at all? He's a social butterfly and has no problem making friends or plans. Those are the ones you have to look out for. They Sometimes they be too social and they want to go out and spread their wings and fly away. His constant surrounded by happy people. He's currently attending the school cosmetology pro- uh, oof. I mean- well, I mean, it's not a bad thing for a guy. Uh, I don't know. I don't think. Uh, maybe, I guess. If you see more than a few leaving his class with beautifully styled or dried hair, dyed hair, sorry. <laughs> not to mention you heard he's been single for a while now. It's crazy to think that somebody so cute doesn't have a partner. Or maybe you confess your love to Louie. Louis, ew. I don't really like the name. The cool but quiet dude who always hanging out around the music department, practicing his instruments, and just hanging around with music blasting through his headphones. He always has a side demeanor. A stoic demeanor, sorry. I was rubbing my nose. And it feels like nobody can get under his skin. Those are the ones that usually are the nicest ones honestly the quiet guys oh my god the quiet shy ones are freaking adorable you've seen way too many people try to pick fights with him and only to have them with a cigarette flicked at their face <laughs> with his middle finger <laughs> though you know you know for sure that you've been You've seen the kind heart. Sorry, I'm. Sorry. I need my glasses, y'all. You've seen the kind heart he hides away. After all, he does seem to spend a lot of time feeding stray animals. Doesn't make him nice. That just he might be making. He might be causing a problem. He might be making more of an issue than causing than fixing the issue. Sorry. So who is it going to be, Oller or Louie? I hope I'm saying his name right. Personally, I get the social butterfly thing. I mean, it's cool because, you know, you guys are going to always have, you know, friends around. So when you don't want to, you know, hang out with each other, you can hang out with your friends. But I'm all down for the the quiet types. You decide that Louie is better, it's a better choice and start to think over how to go about confessing. After all, tomorrow was Valentine's Day, and you could always get him something to celebrate. Hmm. You take a moment to decide. Decide. Okay. Decide what you want to do. Bring him chocolates. Give him a stuffed cat. Don't bother to get. We'll give him a stuffed cat. Look at this. Hold on. 
Is it SH? Okay, I was looking for a button SH. That's kind of, it's kind of creepy. The next day rolls around and you wander around campus trying to find your red-headed crush. He's red-headed now? I thought he was, you know what, never mind. Down one of the halls until you stop at the door to the courtyard. Maybe he's out here. As you open the door, you felt it hit something. You look down to see Louis sitting just a bit <laughs> in front of the door, buckling up his shoes. He slowly turns. Okay, so that's his fault, okay? Why would you stop in front of a door to tie your shoes? If you don't step to the side, he slowly turns his head towards you, looking up with his piercing blue eyes. Oh, hello. He's kind of cute, in a weird way. He kind of looks like a girl. Sorry. Louis stood up, rubbing <laughs> his, <laughs> rubbing the back of his neck before stepping out of the way. Ah, Louis, no, I'm sorry. But I was blocking the door. The two of you stared at each other for a moment. Louis looked at the stuffed cat tucked safely in your arms. Looks like something popular these days. Somebody's popular today, sorry. You look down at the cat before realizing that he thought it was somebody's gift to you. What? No, this is for you. Oh gosh, you just kind of flat out said it. You shove into his chest <laughs> with a pout. You got me a stuffed cat. He looks <laughs> At it, it's over, he looks it over carefully, squishing the paws before turning his attention to you again. Ashley, uh, Louis, I wanted to talk to you about something. Oh God, his deadpan stare was killing you. Were you annoying him? No, wait. His face always looks like that. You try to calm down a bit before continuing, but he's kind of slightly smiling now. At first he wasn't smiling. But now he's kind of slightly smiling, so are we doing good? I've been admiring you for a while now, and uh, I want to tell you that I like you. A lot. I want to try to get to know you. Oh god, the silence. See, the silence kills you because with the silence type, it could be, be silent because he likes you. It could also mean he's silent because he feels sorry for you. And then it can also mean he's silent because he likes you too. So it's just like, oh. I think I already said he likes you too. But still, the point is, like, he could be silent just because, like, oh, wow, this is awkward silent. Ha. 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 Yeah, sure. Forget it. Wait, really? I'm heading to the concert tonight. It's free admission. You can come with it. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> cough, <coughs> cough, burped at the same time. Oh, that hurt. Ow. You can come with if you want. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Meet me at the train station around 7.30 then. Okay, can do. The two of you part ways and you can't stop thinking about your plans for tonight throughout the school day. Once you get home, you realize you have to pick an outfit to wear. He didn't tell me what kind of concert it is. Like, are we talking like My Chemical Romance, Fall Out Boy? Are we talking something like a Bailey Ray or like an Erica Badu concert? Are we talking, you know, rock, R&B, rap? I mean, I don't know. I mean, once you get home, you realize that you have to pick an outfit to wear that night still. Can I see the outfits? Please do not just make, give me the words without the outfits. Thinking through everything you own, you have a few choices. Okay, yes, I get to see the outfits. Let's see. Um. Oh, he didn't tell me what. So we're not going to go casual, okay? You don't want to show up to a, a date in sweatpants. I think that's about the last thing you're going to want to do. Um, let's see. Let's do... Ugh, let's do alternative. Okay, okay, let's, ugh. okay, I picked the middle one. You hurry to the train station once the time comes. 
You're pleased with the choice of your outfit. As you look around the station, you spot Louis leaning back on a bench, arms spread out across the top of his top as sorry, blah, blah, blah. across the top as he stares at the ceiling. I don't know how I messed that up. I was looking dead at you know what? Okay. Hey, Louis. He looked up at you from the bench, sitting up only when you get close enough to get oh to get a clear view of you. Okay, please, please like my outfit, Louis. You can. Cool. He stood up from the bench, shoving his hands in his pockets. Let's get going then. Oh! Look at him! He's, he's, he's eyeing us! You guys, he is eyeing us. The two of you board the train together. It was packed and you couldn't help but stumble a bit once it started moving. Thankfully, Louie was sturdy, and you found yourself leaning on him just the slightest bit. Doesn't look like she's leaning on him, but you know, I, I still don't know kind of know what I look like personally. He didn't seem to mind, so you rode the train in silent happiness. <laughs> I kind of let you guys see like the full pictures and stuff because it's, cause sometimes the pictures are kind of cool, but this one's kind of eh. Eventually, the two of you made it to the venue. Louis led, <laughs> led the way so that the two of you could get a decent spot to listen from. I just thought about it. Do you guys think that like a concert would be like the worst place to take a first date? Have you heard of the band that's playing tonight? No, I haven't heard of them. Who is it? Their name is Red Friday. So maybe I picked the right outfit. Most of their music is considered punk, I guess. Are you into that? Yeah, I, <laughs> I like most music, Ashley. That sounds just like me, I swear. I like almost all music. Do you know? Good to know, sorry. Jesus. Brain no work sometimes, brain no work. I actually really like this band. They don't play in public often, so this is pretty rare to treat. How long have you been a fan? Three years. I got to see their first show when they were just starting out. Oh, that burp. <laughs> it's got my chest burning. Does that ever happen to y'all? Maybe I'm just weird. I don't know. My body kind of gives up on me sometimes. That's pretty cool. As the band starts up, you realize that just how close you have to stand a Louie in a crowd and you feel yourself blush. The music plays and you both enjoy your first few sets. The band takes a break and you and Louie are given some time to talk. So, what are some of the things you're into? Oh, well, like reading, listening to music, watching cartoons, watching movies. Oh, duh. I'm into music more than reading, but I'm also into reading too. And, I mean, I guess if you count anime as cartoons, I guess I, I mean, I'm into cartoons. Listening to music is my favorite thing to do when I need to relax. Seems like you're having something in common after all. How about you? What are some, what are, bah, what are some of your other interests? I don't think I would ask that at a concert. Just me personally. Just because, I mean, it's it's loud. It's full of people. You can't really talk to each other. You can't get to know each other. Louis stares off for a moment before responding. Obviously music. I like reading short stories and other stuff like that too. Sometimes I go for long walks. For night walks. Hold on. For what? And hang around coffee shops. Night walks don't sound too fun. I mean, I'd be paranoid walking at night. That's just me, though, I guess. He shrugs. Sorry, I was checking my phone. He shrugged. It seemed like he didn't have a whole lot to share. Either that or he didn't want to. The band resumed playing not too, lo not too long after our conversation, and you went back to enjoying the music. 
Once the concert was wrapping up, the two of you began to make your way to the out the venue before the, the rest of the crowd started off. Started off, sorry. That's supposed to be like the nice guy. It's kind of cute. So, why do you want to go out with me? I'm not exactly the most interesting dude around. He asked this as he lit this lit up a cigarette. See, ooh. <laughs> I don't like cigarettes. The smell of them just makes me so nauseous. The flame from the lighter illuminating his face. Well, I mean, your eyes, your sense of style, the taste in music. You're quiet most of the time. Mm. I guess we could say his eyes. I really like your eyes. They're so striking. My eyes. That's a piss poor reason to like somebody. As you continue walking, oh God. Okay, be be real. I mean, as real as it's gonna get. As you continue walking, Louis points to the flower cart further out. Hey, you wanna get one? A flower? Yeah, it's Valentine's Day after all. He grabs your hand and pulls you towards the vanier. So which one do you want? You look over the rose. The roses, pink and red in color. Pink, please. I want red. I don't want this fine. Red, sure. Louis buys you a red rose. Buys a red rose for you, Jesus. I'm messing up all over the place. This is, look, I'm not perfect, okay? I am messing up all over the place. And tucks it behind your ear. You look good in red, you know. You both continue to make your way to the well-lit train station. Before you enter, Louis stops you. He stares at you for a moment before speaking. Hey, listen. This hasn't been too bad of a night. Do you want to come over to my place and see my CD collection? Ah, uh, so nerdy. He rubs the back of your neck, avoiding eye contact as you speak to you. My roommate is out tonight anyways, so we can uh, go to sleep comfortably in the bed and not do bad things. See, this is why y'all mind is always in the gutter. Shame on y'all. We can play it as loud as we want. That sounds fun, sure. The two of you walk off the station and Louis leads you back to his place. <laughs> It's down a flight of stairs, and you have to walk through a weird alley to get to it. As Louis fiddles with the lock, he continues talking to you. My roommate's uncle actually owns this building, so he ended up giving us the whole basement to do whatever we want with. That's cool. Who's your roommate, though? His name is, oh, God. Aller. Oh, boy. Oh, this is... Oh, you know what? It could have happened the other way, too. Okay, I'm glad I chose him, though. But I kind of want to see who all, what Aller looks like, so I might do two parts of this. He's a dude that walks around campus looking like an Easter basket. Ah, is that so? You can't help but laugh it off and think how funny it is that both of your crushes happen to live together. The two of you walk inside and get comfortable. In the living room. Wait a minute. Uh, living room's okay. He puts one of the CDs into the stereo and turns it on. I'm going to grab a drink. Do you want one? Yeah, that sounds nice. As you look over the living room, you start noticing just how much everything clashes with each other. <laughs> Pestles is up bears. And oh my god. Knickknack decorated the shelves. Oh my god. Posters of punk bands and horror movies on the wall. How do these two live together? You know what? I guess opposites do attract though. When Louis comes back to try to strike up a conversation. So what's your favorite band? Uh stuff animals yours or all this do you want to make out um we can ask 
They're ours. He's crazy about collecting them. I don't really get it though. His room must be filled with them, huh? Oh yeah, I try to avoid it if I can. The music continues to play. As you sit there, you listen, listening, you start to doze off. Your eyes start to shut open, shut open. It's hard to keep them open and eventually you give in. Huh? Your eyes slowly open and you try to stretch out. Stop by a cold metal gate at your feet? Whoa. What is this? You're laying in a metal dog cage. What the heck did you get in? What? You turn it you turn onto your stomach and knees looking at the front of it. The little bars of it are far too small to close together for you can be able to unlock the door. Did we just get kidnapped on Valentine's Day? Really? Your hand, let alone fingers, couldn't fit. Good morning. Looking up from the lock, you see that a few feet in front of you, Louis is sitting on the bed, just staring at you. Trying to get out already? It's gonna be a problem. Louis, why the heck am I in a cage? Oh, yeah. I guess you want an answer to that. Louis kneels down in front of the cage. In his hand, <laughs> you can see your phone. He points to the screen to you, a picture of you and a friend sit on the screen. You really left a bad taste in my mouth today. What did I do? I thought that you were going to be special, like her. But you turned out to be just a trashy and, an and annoying as everybody else in this world. So annoying. He throws your phone against the wall behind you. The bits of plastic and glass from the screen fall into the you, the gate. Sorry, you guys. I'm trying not to burp and cough and stuff and sneeze all over the mic. I'm, my sinus is just acting up. Jesus. So he kidnapped us and just because we didn't fit his standards, now we're trashy. I figured the world would be better off without somebody like you. You got my hopes up. You can hear a whistling from the hallways. It's muffled, but you can hear it well enough. It sounds like the whistle from a tea kettle. I'll be back. He leaves the room. You sit there horrified in the situation you found yourself in. What did you do to made him so disgusted with you? Was it the teddy bear? We gave you a teddy bear, now you're gonna kill us. You just didn't understand. It was just a date. How could you have possibly come off so annoying or bad that he felt the need to do this? Louis enters the room again, holding in the handle of a kettle. You can see the steam flowing from the spout. He walks over and kneels in front of you again. Oh, wow. Look at his face. He went from being like the silent, cute type to a dangerous monster. Here's a little fun fact before we get started. Before you get any ideas. He poured the boiling water onto, my, onto his legs, not even flinching or giving a sign of pain. He's crazy. I can't feel a lot of things, so you probably won't be able to fight your way out of this. You stare at the kettle with wide eyes, and before you know it, he starts pouring the boiling water on through the top of the cage. Ah, stop! Oh my god, it burns! I bet it does. I bet it does burn. Jesus. Screaming out, you can't move from the water. The cage is too small. 
You can only squirm and fidget around in the tight space as you feel your skin burn. You only watch it with an amused expression. Scream all you want, no one's going to hear you down here. After a while of you just laying there crying, he finally opens the cage and pulls you out. He sat on top of you, grabbing you by the neck and started choking you. You couldn't really fight back, only being choked by the guy you had earlier confessed to, earlier that day confessed to. We got killed for a stuffed animal. What if we chose differently? I'm see, I'm sitting here thinking, cause like, what if we chose differently? Try as you might, you keep, you could you keep breathing. You could, blah blah blah. Try as you might to keep breathing, you couldn't. Soon enough, your vision blurred, and you could feel your head spinning. <sighs> this sort of torture continued for a few days. You would get to rest for a while. When he left the house. When he came back, he would go back to either burning you or suffocating you. This man's a psychopath. He didn't do much else from that. So when you finally felt your body giving out for good, as he choked you again, you felt relieved. Ending, taking my breath away. Well... Eat your heart out, Valentine. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to play through this again and choose different things. And maybe something else will happen. But right now, that's about it. I will see all of you in the next video. Bye.